In the final chapter of the Eye of the Storm series, I presented Easter eggs, surprise geologic findings that confirmed a theory or presented astonishing new information about Earth's electric circuitry. Exploring the electric Earth is a perpetual egg hunt because every rock confirms the bunny is real. Electrical discharges follow patterns and behaviors that yield definitive information about cause and effect. Discharge patterns on the landscape indelibly record discharge events like a holographic data bank. Chapters 8 and 9 of Eye of the Storm discuss surface conductive discharges across Earth's surface that form the Colorado River and its tributaries. The trace of a surface conductive discharge is particularly rich in information because unlike a lightning bolt that momentarily sticks on the Earth, a surface discharge has to crawl across the surface meeting significant impedance, seeking out conductive pathways, expending vast energies transporting matter, while explosively faulting and excavating. It takes time, it's not energy efficient, and it leaves its mark. A stunning display of a particular type of surface conductive discharge can be found in the Laramie Mountains in Wyoming. Embedded in these mountains are gorges and ridgelines that literally form a phase diagram of what took place. It couldn't be more explicit than if God had left his blueprint on the drafting table for all to see. This 15-mile cross is from a discharge between two out-of-phase circuits. First, however, let's consider the geometry of a surface conductive discharge. Each discharge branches out in fractal self-similar dendrites to absorb all the surface charge on the conductive object it's attached to. In our case, it's the Earth. This is a diffusion-limited aggregation. Each filament of a discharge soaks up charge from a particular domain. The domain is a region surrounding the spark defined by its electromagnetic field, from which it sucks charge of one polarity and spits charge of the other polarity in reactive power surges. It does this because it's not insulated current like we use in electrical systems. Filament domains cover every square inch of solid land on the planet. We call them watersheds because they serve to collect rainwater into river channels, but that's a consequence, not a cause. The earth once crawled with electrical discharges. This should be self-evident in any theory of planetary formation. In consensus theories, planet and comet collisions would necessitate big sparks. In electric universe theory, sparks are already acknowledged. Why consensus science doesn't look for evidence of electrical discharge is evidence they don't ask the right questions. What is interesting, the big easter egg I'm getting to, is that domains cross and the filaments interact. Giant sparks result. The interaction we'll investigate created a landscape that can only be explained electrically. The statistical probability of a consensus theory's doing it is nigh impossible. Domains don't usually cross because skin effects occur between domains that keep them segregated as if by a membrane but they can cross and interact if domains are out of balance. An overvoltage in one could make it aggressive and overcome another. Depending on phase disparities, this can be a gentle hand-holding connection or it can be an explosive punch. We'll look at one of the explosive kinds. The annotated image shows the area of interest, circled in violet, including the Laramie Mountains surrounded by green and red circles. The Laramies are part of the Continental Divide as it cuts through southeastern Wyoming. The circles denote the major streams flowing from the mountains. Green are streams flowing to the North Platte River and thence to the Missouri and ultimately the Mississippi Valley and the Gulf of Mexico. Red are streams that flow to a sink in the basin west of the mountain range. The sink forms the Seminole and Pathfinder Reservoirs, also circled in red west of the mountains and the North Platte River forms the Glendo Reservoir on the opposite side circled in green. The high basin drains around the mountains in two flows shown by yellow connections. The North Platte runs near Casper, Wyoming and around the north of the mountains and the Laramie flows from Medicine Bow to Fort Laramie through a pass to the south of the range. The overall structure is shaped like a heart with the mountains filling the upper half, the basins filling the lower, and the rivers acting as arteries and veins. The distinctive yellow X in the center of the range is the X pattern that was shown earlier and it's a discharge pattern that occurred when the North Platte filament of the Mississippi discharge 
met a separate domain with a different phase. What you see is literally a natural phase diagram that records the phase angles of the discharge. The discharge took place because the Missouri circuit was an AC current that made connection to a ground current in the basin and spark shot between the circuits where the domains came together. The Laramie Mountains formed as a consequence. The discharge adopted an X pattern where it made connection, with the east-west branches vectored along the electric field denoted by the dotted red and green lines. The electric field is the dipolar alignment between the lakes. The lakes, or the depressions where these lakes are now, were created in the same discharge event that met at the crux of the X, and sent reactive discharges rotated at 90 degrees to the originating spark between the circuit domains. The discharge is much like the resonant frequency discharges discussed in Chapter 8 and 9 of Eye of the Storm, which created the major 180 degree branches of the Colorado River. The geometry is different, an X instead of a T, but that is because the X is a resonant discharge between two existing circuit domains, whereas the T is a result of a single circuit bifurcating. The bifurcating discharge meets critical resistance due to a buildup of stray capacitance that resonates the circuit, increasing frequency and therefore resistance until the current is stopped, causing it to explode in reactive discharges 90 degrees to either side of the original current. The X is produced by two out-of-phase circuit domains coming together. The Missouri circuit is an alternating current, whereas the basin circuit is a direct current to ground. The two circuits go in and out of phase with each other as the AC current alternates. This makes a connection, then a discharge. The discharge is totally in reactive power mode because the out of phase circuits are 180 degrees out of phase and that has the same effect as resonant discharge, raising resistance to infinity and forcing the current out sideways at 90 degrees. The first case is like putting a finger over the nozzle of a hose and forcing water to spray out sideways 90 degrees to the direction of the nozzle. The second case is like having two hoses aimed at each other where the stream's impact flow sprays out sideways. In one, the water pressure changes flow direction makes a T, and in the other, two flows impact and the pressure changes flow direction to make an X. The reactive discharge dissolves the voltage differential between circuits by expending their charge, the entire accumulated charge in the Missouri circuit in this case, in an explosive X-shaped spark. It created what astrophysicists call magnetic reconnection. Astrophysicists don't recognize electric circuitry in space because in dark mode current doesn't emit radiation they detect. And since they can't see it, their reductionist minds can't make the intuitive leap to circuitry but they do detect the magnetic flux that results. They invented the term magnetic reconnection in lieu of an explanation because they can't fathom the simplicity of two out-of-phase circuits coming together to make a spark. Magnetic reconnection. The moving lines are magnetic field lines, the things astrophysicists think are reconnecting, but they are actually the magnetic field lines generated by current flow oriented along the dotted line. Their model only recognizes magnetism, so the dotted lines are just separated as the magnetic field. The big yellow arrows pointed inwards and outwards in different quadrants of the X are the vectors of electric current induced by the changing magnetic field. In the Laramies, induced electric currents were expressed in the atmosphere by plasma winds. Plasma winds drew to the crux of the discharge at ground level in top and bottom quadrants and blew outward at high level like an anvil cloud in the right and left quadrants. The winds lifted in a vertical updraft over the center of the X, but even more astounding is the effect that magnetic fields and reactive currents had shaping the entire basin and rain structure. The landscape is a 3D photograph of what happened. To appreciate what took place, the three-dimensional nature of the circuit domains needs to be recognized. Charge diffused across the ground as well as through the ground and into the sky. Capacitance between the earth and sky forced mirroring currents in the atmosphere, stirring a violent storm system. Think of it as a local squall line of thunderstorms raging over the mountains at the time they were formed and while the ground discharge took place. 
The central updraft over the X formed a huge mesocyclone flanked by smaller thunderheads to either side. Most of the energy of the discharge went straight up into the mesocyclone, pulsing it with energy. The wind paths to be described are ground level winds that were shaped by the electromagnetic field at the planet's surface. The combined effect of the discharge at ground level, its magnetic field, and the resultant plasma winds makes an X pattern, shown in red. The magnetic field lines, shown in blue, are just like they're shown in the pattern of magnetic reconnection. The yellow vectors are pointing to the direction of wind paths at ground level following this storm system along the magnetic field lines. The winds in the northeast and southeast quadrants flow parallel, patterned around the X. In the northeast, they cross magnetic field lines perpendicularly, flowing straight to the crux of the discharge. The jet stream winds leave valleys with broad rounded or V-cut bottoms carpeted with silt, but no inner gorge. They may have a superficial meandering stream erosion, but not a deep cut straight inner gorge. We'll examine more wind-cut valleys later, but first let's distinguish between a wind-cut valley and a discharge blasted canyon like the one that formed the axe. The path of a discharge leaves canyons rough cut with deep inner gorges. This is the Platte River or northeastern arm of the X in the Laramie Mountains. The size of the discharge canyon indicate arc blast which expose granite tetrahedrons on one side, the tips of the tetrahedrons jut out. This is the leeward side, exposed and broken, whereas the other side shows the flat faces of windward tetrahedrons. This indicates the mountains were laid down by a crosswind before the discharge occurred and blasted this canyon. So the mountains resulted from an evolving storm system that changed its winds surely due to this big spark. Note on both mountain sides the cross-hatch patterns of shock diamonds in the canyon flanks created by shock waves. The northeast quadrant wind cut valleys between north and east arms of the X discharge. Note the many transverse striations of cuts and gorges and how they change orientation between the arms of the discharge. Striations come from deposition layers shaped by shock waves transverse to the winds and by secondary discharge filaments between the circuit paths. The winds drew into a central vortex at the crux of the discharge, drawing dust into a pile to form the mountains. And therefore, each quadrant of the discharge displays shock waves that are oriented by the wind in that quadrant. Secondary discharges are from short circuiting sparks between current paths, like sparks between live bare wires that are too close together. There is one secondary discharge visible that makes its own X pattern center right in the image. And this is a mini discharge between the AC current and the big X and the static buildup of charge in the wind cut lane due to the plasma jet stream. It's essentially an AC to DC connection that makes a perfect 90 degree reaction just like the big X and it's even oriented in the same orientation, repeating self-similar forms. In the next show, we'll conclude with a look at more wind-cut valleys in the Laramie Mountains of Wyoming and how they're shaped by electromagnetic fields.